Welcome back to the second part of Bleeding Heart. This is where we will be picking up with some of the angst, so I hope you guys are ready. So I am not going to hold you guys back any longer, just be ready. Hello my lovely viewers. Looking for some affordable Angua called the anime merch? Want to support your favorite Haikyuu team or join UA? What about joining the Straw Hat Pirates for an adventure or two? Want to join the Black Bulls or the Fairy Tale Guild? Well, this site has that and so much more. Use my discount code and receive 10% off your entire order. Link and code is in the description. Thank you so much for watching. The normal blue sky stole into a steel gray. Puffed clouds threatened the spur of Okoro as he ran from the station. But as his luck would have it, he was completely defenseless to the laws of Mother Nature. The first of the drizzle decorated the sidewalk until it was left untouched by the cold touch of the sky. Shit, just my luck, huh? The gel that styled his hair was quickly losing its touch, and his white shirt stuck to his skin in an unkindly manner. Stepping inside the convenience store to weigh out the rest of the rain, Kuro couldn't help but notice the eyes of everyone on him. Please, like he was the only one that was soaked to the bone. The only difference was that his clothes seemed to be more... see-through than anyone else. Um, excuse me? Great, a confrontation was just what he needed. He turned on his heel meeting a woman about his age, just a head shorter than him. She extended her arm out, giving him a towel. So you can dry up. Not sure what to take of the gesture, he shook his head even though drying off did sound nice since the cool air inside the store chilled him to the bone. I'll be fine. Thank you, though. I should be leaving soon. Well, you were actually getting the floor sweat, and I kind of work here. Sighing, he took the towel and thanked the woman. She was just doing her job, and him standing in the middle of the store, leaving behind sopping footprints, didn't exactly ease the burden on her shoulders. He walked down the aisles to burn time, remembering that Akashi needed more supplements for his anemia. It certainly wouldn't hurt to go ahead and get it. Tearing from the gazes that still lingered on him, his phone rang, making the silence even louder than before, if even possible. Hello? Tatsu, sweetie! You finally picked up my calls! He internally groaned, recognizing his mother's voice. He didn't set out to avoid her, but her expectations quickly became too much for him and their last conversation ended up turning into an argument over dinner in front of his partners. For once, it wasn't even about them. While she did support his sexuality, she was still very skeptical on the idea of him having more than one partner and would occasionally put her input on the matter. She often favored Kenma because of their long history, but to her, Akashi and Bokuto were just outsiders. Yes, sorry, I've been busy at work. It wasn't exactly a lie. With a new campaign coming out to promote some new gear, he'd been running himself crazy at work. That's no excuse, you can at least message me every once in a while. Weren't you the one who said not to bother? He exclaimed through gritted teeth. It was the aftermath of their argument that his mother threw such hateful words at him, not wanting to have any contact with him. He sighed, unavoidably looking out the glass doors, hoping the rain would let up. What is it? Their relationship wasn't always like this. After the divorce, Koda became really close to his mother. He had the irrational fear that if he lost her, then he would be all alone, and for a kid, that was a lot to take in. Well, your stepfather will be back from his business trip. We would like you to come home and have dinner with us. We? Oui. Well, he doesn't actually know yet, but your brother would love it if you could make it. Oh, his stepbrother. Now that boy was the spawn of Satan. If he hadn't somehow seen proof of his kinship with his stepfather, he would have been convinced otherwise. His brother did everything in his power to make his life a living hell. While his mother might have been open and accepting to at least Kenma, his brother was absolutely appalled to know that he had a gay brother. Ah, oh, Sota. Yes, I do believe that isn't the case. If I recall correctly, and please forget me if I'm mistaken, but I remember him threatening Ko. 
Tatsu, don't be silly. You know he was just playing around. Boys will be boys. They have to try, Amuse laughed and clenched his jaw. Then it seems we're remembering different things. Mother. On the other line, he heard his mother smack her lips in annoyance. I'm not trying to argue with you. Can we just have a normal conversation? I want you at that dinner, so I expect you to come. Like I had a choice. He mumbled under his breath, hanging up on the call so he wouldn't have to hear her next string of insults. He looked out the door. Well, at least it has finally stopped raining. Tetsu, where have you been? Akashi was already waiting at the doorway while the ace ran to get a towel for him. His skin was cold to the touch, but his body felt warm. After the argument with his mother, he stopped at a bar for just one drink. That turned into him losing count how many glasses he consumed after Yaku and Lev showed up and offered a few rounds. It wasn't his intention to become shit-faced drunk. He collapsed into Akashi's warm arms, taking in his fresh scent. If it wasn't for the former setter holding him up, he surely would have become acquainted with the floor. Are you drunk? Raising an eyebrow precariously, he pulled the giant aside. The hazy reflection in Koda's dark eyes were answer enough. Using brute force, Koda found his way back into Akashi's touch, shivering under his warm embrace. Jeez, you're freezing! On signal, Bokuto appeared around the corner with a towel to cover him with a look of worry. Koda, do you mind helping me? I don't think he's going to be moving anytime soon. What happened? The ace asked with a grunt, lifting the raven off of the floor. Kodo let his head slump on his lover's shoulder and absentmindedly played with the soft hairs on the nape of his neck. I haven't figured that part out yet. His lips thinned in worry, biting his bottom lip hard enough to break the skin, just barely enough so he could taste the iron flooding his taste buds. He needs a bath to warm up. Do you think? Yeah, I'm on it. Bokuto smiled, passing a kiss on Akashi's temple before addressing Koro, who still clung on to him. The towel was barely doing its part to dry him, as it was draping off his shoulders. Most of the fabric got caught on the ace's hands when he went to pick him up. Kenma appeared around the corner of the gaming room. Is everything okay? The stressed raven sighed, prying Koro's shoes off of his feet. Kenma... Bokuto startled when Koda made a move to launch himself towards the blonde, but gripped on his thighs and waist to hold him in place. Yeah, this troublemaker here showed up drunk. Jeez, he really could have at least texted us to let us know he'd be home late. The gamer walked around Bokuto to get to the raven and brushed the raven's hair aside. It was sticky with the remaining residue from his gel. I'll get him to the bath. Once in the bathroom, the ace set the taller down on the floor so he'd be able to start the hot bath water with ease. <sighs> you really know how to make us worry, you know? He was cut off with a loud retching coming from Kuro. He spun on his heels, seeing the raven heaving over the toilet. Tears were in his eyes and his body quivered. Shit, shit. The ace ran over, forgetting about the water and dove on his knees, rubbing his lover's trembling back and held his hair out of his face. There you go, let it all out. It's okay. He hushed, whispering nothing but small reassurances and kind words. Once the worst was over and the contents of his stomach were empty, Koda leaned back and ultimately buried himself into Bokuto's lap. It's okay. Hot tears streamed down his cheeks, still tipsy from the amount of alcohol he consumed. Even though he was no longer sick, the shivering still racked his body. His skin was cold to the touch, so cold that it hurt Bokuto's skin each time he went to console him. He stripped the wet cloth off of him and placed him into the tub. Hey, what's the matter? Bokuto was scared. Koro had always been rational and composed. Yes, he'd get into stupid shit all the time especially back in high school, but none of them put him or his health into danger. It was unlike him, and even the ace was terrified at what it was doing to his lover. 
Talk to me, Tatsu. What happened? He discarded his own clothes and joined Kuro in the tub. He stood behind him, wrapping his arms around the raven's waist, who seemed to appreciate the contact. I'm sorry. Sniffling, Kuro turned around and threw his arms around his neck, pulling him close. A new string of tears emerged and he sobbed into Bokuto's chest. Hey, it's okay. We aren't upset. We are just... concerned. Can you tell me what happened? The continued sobs told him that he wasn't going to get any answers out of him in this state. The only thing he could do for his lover was to be there for him. He wished he had the power that could take away everything that hurt him. Bogotá despised seeing the raven in such a state of hurt. He felt furious he'd been so oblivious. How long had these emotions been building up in Kuro that it got to the point of him breaking? Kuro was strong, probably the strongest of them all. This was a rare sight to see, a sight that Bogoto never wished to see. Kuro stayed laid in bed for nearly an hour after he woke up, staring blankly towards the ceiling to the point illusions picked up shapes on the solid surface. He felt hollow of what he once was, and the still taste of alcohol remained lingering on his tongue. Yearning for water, he ignored the feeling and laid limp in bed. He couldn't urge himself to move a finger, let alone get out of bed and go to the kitchen for a glass of water. He felt ashamed. How could he get so wasted and stumble home much later than intended and worry his lovers like that? Why did he pick up the call knowing exactly what the outcome would be? Why... Why did he still get hurt after shutting them out for so long? Why did he have to care? A soft knock on the door sounded, but he didn't respond, nor get up to move. Regardless, the door opened with a loud creak and a pair of footsteps approached him. Tatsu, are you awake? His throat felt tight. Not being able to speak, he just hummed. Akashi smiled walking over to the bed and sat on the edge, brushing Kuro's bed head aside to get a better look at him. His face was pale and dark circles rimmed around his eyes. There you are, silly. You've been asleep for so long, you even slept in later than Kinma. Are you feeling okay? Kuro wearily glanced towards the window to the room. It was surely past noon, and the way the sun pointed inside the window told him it was afternoon, but not quite golden hour. A silent buzzing of his phone tore Akashi's attention from him. He picked up his phone and looked at where all the notifications were coming from. It's... your mother... and brother. Is that what's wrong? The silence lingered, far longer than Keiji was willing to wait for an answer. He unlocked his lover's phone to look at the messages and Kota made no move to stop him, no matter what. He could not bring himself to look at Akashi while he read the messages he refused to look at himself. He was afraid of what his mother would say. While she was cruel about some aspects of his life, Soto was lethal. At the end of the day, Kodo was a coward. Akashi stayed silent, skimming past the multitude of missed phone calls from his mother and a few from his stepfather. He tapped the message icon. I don't understand why you're not answering my calls again and refuse to hold a proper conversation with your mother. I thought I raised you better than this, but once again I was proven wrong. I gave you a lot, more than you'd ever know, and well, I held high expectations from you. I'm proud of your career, but I don't know what went wrong. I don't know why you hate me. I got you out of your father's home when I got too much, and sacrificed so much to get you into a good school. We have given a lot to you, including Sota. I don't understand why you're being so inconsiderate of them. They want to be a part of this family, yet you keep on dismissing them. I'm disappointed in you, Tetsuro. Reading it once wasn't enough. Akashi thought his eyes were being deceived. He read it over again, two, three, and even four more times, but the words never changed. He tapped on Sola's contact to read his messages. Heard the old bat told you to come to dinner. Do us a favor and don't show up. 
or I'll make your life a living hell. If you do manage to get the balls to come, don't think about bringing anybody. You know what will happen if you do. I'm only putting up with you because of Dad. If it were up to me, I probably would have killed you already if I'm being completely honest. I really don't like you. Whatever your mother says about family this and family that is complete bullshit and you know it. Do me a favor and fuck off. The screen started shaking in his hands. It took a long moment to realize that it wasn't a device, but him that was shaking. His hands trembled and he dropped Kuro's phone. What? Why didn't you say anything? He couldn't hide the shake in his voice. Normally calm and soft, he couldn't fathom the audacity of Sulta and even his mother. His voice came out louder than intended. It was more of a shout than a simple question. Tetsu, he is threatening you. How long has this been going on? Did one of them talk to you yesterday? Is that why you came home late and wasted? Being the normally composed one in the relationship, Akashi even shocked himself when the string of questions slipped through his lips before he even thought it through. It wasn't until he saw the small shutters from Kuro's back that he actually inspected further. Going to the other side of the bed, the former's captain's face was wet with tears, and his hand was clasped tightly over his mouth to contain the noises. The sight shattered Keiji's heart into a million pieces. While Bogoto was forced to witness the night prior, now he was the one facing the heartbreak. He pried Kuro's hands away from his body, hugged him tightly. Tight enough, so maybe it would melt away his distress, but the wails only grew louder and more wretched. Sorry. Sorry I didn't mean to throw all that on you. It's okay. Accepting the comforting touch, Kuro could only let all the emotions he bottled for so many years go loose. It's okay. He repeated over and over, but no matter how many times he said it, it didn't sound any truer than before because he wasn't sure. Akashi didn't know the extent of the damage. Kuro never took the threat seriously. Sincerely, he was overwhelmed. I'm tired. It was the first time he spoke since the night prior, between all the drinking, vomiting, and crying. His voice was almost beyond recognition. Looking over Akashi's shoulder, he was able to see his phone still open on the floor. It was his list of contacts and the last messages from each person. Some of them were from his lovers, and he could see the last messages from his mother and Sota. I'm disappointed in you, Tetsuro. Do me a favor and fuck off. He was... really... Tired. All right, everyone, that officially wraps up the second part of Bleeding Heart. Hey, that kind of rhymed. Any guys, if you do not want to wait until a whole nother week to see the next part, uh, it's actually up on my channel membership. So if you want to go ahead and see the final two parts of this series, uh, it's available in my channel membership. So there is no need to wait. And don't worry, uh, even though this is the very first couple of videos on my channel membership, I am making it cheap and affordable for you guys. Because I understand the wanting to support a fellow creator, but not being able to support it just because it is ridiculously expensive. So no worries, I got you there. And of course my membership does include more perks than just early access videos. Those perks you can find in my channel bio. Alright, I just want to thank you guys so much for all the support and endless encouragement. We are almost at 8,000 subscribers. What? Uh, so yeah, be expecting an AK special video. And I will see you guys next week.